Good day guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're gonna make another transition in Luma Fusion, and the transition we're gonna make looks like this. This is a wave distort transition where we added some additional flashes between the two cuts which we're gonna create in the tutorial. Now before we head over to the iPad, if this is the first time that you are here, welcome, really nice to see you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so we don't miss out on any future videos. And also before we head over to the iPad, go down to the comment section and comment the next type of transition that you want to see here on this channel. So without further ado, let's head over to the iPad. Now moving over to LumaFusion, I prepared two clips on the timeline. And for this transition, we're only going to use one of them to create the entire transition. The reason for this is to make the transition as seamless as possible. And once our transition is complete, we're going to split the transition in two and then apply a different clip. And for this transition, we're also going to use around 10 frames. So the longer the duration of the cut is, the slower the transition is going to be. And the short the shorter the amount of uh, frames you use, the faster the transition is going to be. So for this one, I found 10, 11 frames to be the best. Now, after we made the cut of 11 frames, we're going to go into edit and then over to color and effects. Then we're going to go over to the pick whip tool on the top right corner and we're going to find the effect distort. Now, if we take a look at the distort effect here, you can see we sort of have this waveform coming in here so we can kind of make a sort of a wave transition using this effect. So that's exactly what we're going to do for today's transition. We're going to make a wave distort transition and we're going to add some blink in there as well to make it pop a little bit more. Now the first keyframe is going to be our starting point. So we're going to adjust the position of the angle here, but we need to keep the radius at zero because this is the starting point. Now after creating the first keyframe, we're going to go to the middle of the clip and we're going to change the angle and the radius of the distort effect. Now you can play around with this and make your own unique type of style. This is just an example and there's many different ways of how you can create a wave transition or use the distort effect to create your own different transitions. Now moving over to the last keyframe here, we're going to find an angle of ending where we want the ending to be and then we're going to change the radius down to zero. Now you can also do some minor adjustments along the way. If we take a look at this on the timeline here, it seems to have a little bit too much wiggle to it and it goes a little bit too fast. So we want to make this a little bit more subtle to make the effect more seamless and look better. So we're going to go over to edit again and we're going to do some fine adjustments adjustments here to the beginning keyframe and to the middle keyframe and then we're going to take a look at the result here after we've done those changes. So now the effect is looking a lot better and we can now proceed over to the next step, which is going into edit, then over to the first keyframe. And then we're going to take the blend mode of this all the way up to 100. Once we've done this, we're going to move straight over to the last keyframe and do the exact same thing. Blend is over to 100 or 1.00. And that leaves us with this subtle sort of glitch distort effect to the wave transition as well, as we can see here. Now, once we've done that, we're going to move out to the timeline and we're going to go to the middle of the clip here and we're going to use the scissors to cut this in two. The next step is to take five frames of the next clip here, make a cut and take this part of the clip and drag over and replace with the current clip inside the last part of the transition. Now, once we've done this, we are almost done with the transition. The next step now is to cover up some of the spots which you can see on the bottom of the frame here. As you can see, we have some spots here which we want to cover up and we can cover up these with cinematic bars or we can simply duplicate the two layers and go into edit on both of the layers and then adjust the size within frame and fit. Simply scale it up so it is a little bit bigger than the previous screen. And once we've done this, we basically use the same clip to fill up the empty spots or the black spots within the image. Now, like I said, you can also use a cinematic bar to cover up the empty spots on the bottom and top of the image. Or if you don't want to use the cinematic bars, you can simply use the duplicator way and then adjust the size of the bottom clip. 
Now, as a finishing touch to the transition, we're gonna add a subtle flash. So we're gonna go over to color and effects on the clip on top, and then we're gonna go over to the color presets and add an original. Now, after adding the original color preset, we're gonna go to the middle of the clip and make a keyframe. Then we're gonna go to the end of the clip and make another keyframe, and here we're gonna adjust the levels and make the clip brighter. Now, by accident, I made this the other way on the last transition, so that means I can copy the effect from the last part of the transition and just apply to the beginning. Then I have to go into the last part of the transition again and go to the last keyframe and make sure that the last keyframe is selected because the, all the changes is happening on the last keyframe and then delete all the keyframes. After deleting all the keyframes, I will go to the beginning of the clip and make another keyframe because now we have all the same effects. After making that keyframe, I will go to the middle of the clip, make another keyframe and then reset all the changes to the original color preset. So now we have a complete transition. So if you go out to the timeline and take a look at the transition, you will have something that looks like this. So there you have another really easy transition that you can create in Luma Fusion. Now if this was the first time that you checked out one of my tutorials, make sure to hit that subscribe button that would be really appreciated, like for the algorithm and that's gonna be the end for today. Let me know down in the comment section below what type of transitions that you wanna see on this channel or if there's any other type of videos. So with that said, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.